Fox 13, with the star of Paramount Pictures, Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. <laughs> Box 13, box 13, box 13, box 13, box 13. Well, this is great. Rain, rain, rain. I'll bet even the ducks wouldn't come out in weather like this. But me, I'm an idiot. I gotta go and take up a profession like being a writer. I couldn't take up something easy. Oh, no, not me. I gotta be a writer so I can be out on nice, cold, wet nights. Beating my brains out. Looking for an idea. Idea. Deadline. Oh, sure. Mustn't forget that ever-loving deadline. <laughs> what a way to make a living. I could have stayed a reporter at the Star Times and had nice assignments. Like listening to political speeches. Or covering the opening of a new manhole. Oh, no, but not me. I have to write fiction. Do it the hard way. Hmm. Well, I might as well take the usual hand. Open the usual door to the usual place. And hear the usual comments. Hiya, Mr. Holiday. Hiya. Copy, copy, boy. Hiya, Dan. What do you say, Ed? Smith, editor wants you. How goes it, Holiday? Oh, pretty good. Where's the makeup on page four? Hiya, Mr. Holiday. How are you? Hiya, Mr. Holiday. Hello, Susie. Anything in box 13? Box 13. Starring Alan Ladd as Dan Holiday. <laughs> Now for Box 13, starring Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. What a character I am. Standing here in front of the wanted counter in a newspaper office while the rain runs down off my coat collar into my shoes. Mr. Holliday. I gotta ruin my last pair of... Huh? What's that, Susie? I said there's a message in Box 13 for you. Here. Oh. Thanks, Susie. Don't mention it. Say, aren't you going to open it? Sorry. Not here, Susie. You know, you got all of us down here at the Star Times awful curious, Mr. Holiday, running that ad. Have I? You've been running it for months. Why don't you change it? Well, I haven't read it for so long, I've forgotten the words. How's it go? Don't you remember? Adventure wanted. We'll go any place, do anything. How about that? I still like it. You'd do a lot better with adventure if you ran your picture with the ad. Oh, no, thanks. Just keep on running it the way it is. But, gee, aren't you ever going to tell us what you do for a living while you keep running that ad? Susie, same old question, same old answer. No. Well, if I'm not doing anything else, at least I've got the people at the Star Times curious. They'd think my brain cells were ten feet off first base if they knew why I really run that ad. Well, maybe they are. Hmm. You can help a person out of great trouble and gain an adventure for yourself if you call Chester 8945 and ask for Carla Williams. Chester, eight, nine, four, five. Carla Williams. Hmm. Sounds like an interesting name. Well, I hope she's home. Hello? Oh, uh, this is the man from Box 13. Tell me, are you serious or was that ad just a joke? No joke, Miss Williams. Are you willing to try anything? Well, uh, that depends what's on your mind. I can't discuss it over the phone. Will you meet me? Of course. There's a little French restaurant down on Ledge Street. Meet me there in the cocktail lounge. 
Uh, what time? Make it 10 o'clock tonight. Tell the bartender you want to speak to Carla Williams. French restaurant on ledge, 10 o'clock. Oh, uh, what block number? The 600 block. You won't fail me, you'll be there. Lady, if it were winter, I'd come with bells on. This sounds like the beginning of a very interesting story. Beautiful woman in distress calls on struggling writer for help. Only she doesn't know I'm a writer and I don't know she's beautiful. What's yours, mister? Oh, I'm, uh, I'm looking for a Carla Williams. Oh, yeah. She's sitting over there in that front booth. Thanks. Uh, Carla Williams? Yes. Oh-ho. Carla Williams could be material for a love story or an adventure story. Or, uh, maybe both. And, uh, do you have a name? Oh, uh, yes. Dan Holliday. Uh, I sit down. Oh, thanks. I'm uh, agreeably surprised. I didn't think a person would get such a satisfactory reply from a water head. And I didn't think I'd get such a nice replier. You're wondering about me, aren't you? You're wondering why you're here. Naturally. Well, I'm being blackmailed. That's a very nasty business. I've been paying blackmail for five years, but tonight's the end. I'm to meet him in 15 minutes and make the final payment and get the letters. Well, that sounds like the end of your troubles. But is it? I can't be sure. That's why I need your help. But what can I do? Well, you can be there as, as a witness. You can make sure this is the end. You can see that I get the letters and get away safely. Oh, uh, lady, you need the police. Why? To make sure everything I've kept hidden for five years comes out in the open? Maybe a friend could do it. My friends would be the last ones on earth I'd want to know. Are you afraid? No. You advertised for adventure? Blackmail isn't my idea of adventure. I'm sorry if my trouble doesn't measure up to your expectations. It's the best I could do on such short notice. Uh-oh. Well, I guess I had that coming. Maybe this isn't your idea of adventure, but I do need help. I need help badly. Let, let's leave it at that. Now, that might appeal to my early Boy Scout training. Then you will. I always help ladies across blackmail wraps. Uh, what happens if your friend makes trouble? We can't make any trouble. He seems to have done all right for the past five years. There won't be any trouble if you're along. Here, reach under the table. Take this. Oh, uh, now, wait a minute. This is a gun. Put it in your pocket. Don't let anyone see it. This is supposed to make everything all right? Well, you won't need it, believe me. I, I thought it would make you feel better. It makes me feel like a policeman. And I still think a policeman is what you want. But you promised. I said maybe. I have to meet him in 15 minutes. Please help me. Where do we go? His apartment. Far from here? We can make it if we leave now. What do you say? Maybe I should never have been a Boy Scout. I watch Carla Williams closely as we ride over to the apartment where she's to meet this man she's been talking about. She's perfectly groomed with a certain niceness about her, except for those twin furrows of worry between her eyes and a cold look of anxiety. I don't think I would like to have her angry at me, though. That's funny. You should have been here 20 minutes ago. Huh. Uh, why don't you try the door? It was unlocked. You might as well wait inside. Unless you have any objections. Not at all. There's a light switch on your right. The living room is straight ahead. Say, you sound like you're familiar with the place. Why not? I've been here many times before. There's a light on in there. Suppose he might have fallen asleep? Waiting for his money? Hardly. 
Well, this is more like it. And this spot is nicely furnished. With my money. But at least we can sit down and make us... Make us... Oh, no. Miss Williams, what's the matter? What happened? Look at the floor by the desk, look. You stay here. Well, well... You'd better call the police. He's dead. Dead? Yeah, he's been shot. Once. Through the heart. I'm glad. I'm glad. He's the one? The man who was blackmailing you? Yes. Would you... Could you go through his pockets? He must have some of those letters with him. Look at his coat pocket. Uh, just a minute, Miss Williams. You don't understand. This man has been murdered. What? We've got to call the police. Murdered? What makes you so sure? There's no gun around any place. Just the same before the police come. His pockets, please. I've got to have those letters. Okay. But it isn't right. Are these what you wanted? Let me see. Yeah. Yeah. They're all here. Now, where's the telephone? We've got to get the police up here and fast. There is no phone. No? How do you know without looking unless... I told you I've been here before. Oh, yes, I forgot. Well, go downstairs. There's a pay phone in the lobby. Tell the police to come up here right away. And come back and we'll wait for them. You're not planning to leave while I'm downstairs, are you? No. Here, here's a nickel. Just dial O and tell the operator you want the police. Hurry. But you... You'll be here. Call, I said. <laughs> I wanted adventure, so I put an ad in a newspaper. And I certainly found what I wanted. Only this isn't good. The man is lying dead on the floor of this apartment. And Carla Williams and I will have to go down to the police headquarters and answer a million questions. All of them embarrassing. Uh, I hope she's made the calls. Say, that's funny. Why would there be a telephone directory in a place where there's no phone? Or maybe there is one. Of course, right here in the hallway. I wonder why she said there was no phone here. Maybe it's been disconnected. Hmm. Operator. This is the operator. Oh, fine. I've written a dozen stories like this. And whenever I've reached this point, the hero always finds that he's been framed. <laughs> framed? The gun. Yeah, I gotta look at that gun. Gotta find out if it's been fired. One shot has been fired. And the police surgeon will probably find a bullet from this gun in that dead man's body. The police. Seems like little Carla took care of that. Hmm. Me, I'm going to take care of something else. I'm leaving. You are listening to Box 13, starring Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. <laughs> Once again, Box 13, starring Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. Well, right now I'm wishing I were half as smart as the heroes of some of my stories. I've got a murder, strange woman, a strange apartment, and a strange feeling that this might not work out to a happy ending. What I need is a cab, a quick trip home, a short drink, and a long, long think. Sure is a rotten night to be out. Yeah, it sure is. I've never seen such rain. It's not so good. Cops are sure busy tonight. Sounds like it. I wonder who they're after. I uh, wouldn't have any idea. Could be a murderer, you know. Yeah, just could be. Just a night for a murder. Perfect. How come you got so wet? It's uh, raining. <laughs> I know, but how come? My umbrella needs recovering. You want the Normandy arms? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's your building up ahead, but it looks like you got lots of company. What do you mean? Them's prowl cars, mister. All over the place. Oh, this 
this is very nice. Carla Williams called the police and must have mentioned my name in passing. <laughs> I'm the type of interesting young fellow that any cop would like to meet. Especially with a murder weapon in my pocket. Tonight, Mr. Holliday, I think you will sleep elsewhere. Want me to pull right in where all them cops are? No, they look busy, so maybe we'd better not bother them. Just keep on driving. But this is where you live, ain't it? I don't feel like going home tonight. I could shove them cops aside, you know. This is legitimate hack. Uh, that would be fun, but don't bother. And you're the boss, mister. Where to? Uh, there's a place down on Franklin Avenue. 1612, I think. I know that place. That's the cheapest hotel in town. Yes, I believe it is. Hey, how do you know about a place like that? I got information there for a story. What a joint like that. What are you going there tonight for? To sleep. You writing another story? I'm living one. Living one? Yes, I left my typewriter at home. Well, Mr. Holliday, to what do we owe this great pleasure? Maybe you're just lucky. More research on the seamier side of life? No, not tonight. I'm looking for a room. A room? Might I remind you, Mr. Holliday, this ain't the Roney Plaza. Have you got a room? Any particular exposure you might like? The less, the better. I'm sure we can fix you up. That is, if you're willing to pay in advance. Buck, buck and a half, how much? Twenty-five dollars, Mr. Holliday. Twenty-five dollars? And if you committed the murder, it'll be fifty dollars, Mr. Holliday. Come on, talk straight. I don't want any trouble with the police. What makes you think I'll cause you trouble with the police? A little box called the radio, police calls... They're a lot of fun to listen to, Mr. Holliday. Yeah, I'll bet they are. You'll be comfortable here and safe. I'm beginning to wonder if I could afford it. With your money? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. I wasn't trying to. Where's your phone? The one on the wall costs a nickel. Thanks. You're staying tonight, Mr. Holliday? got back there in a hurry. You? Where are you? Still in town. What about the police? They with you? What do you think? Thanks for putting in a good word for me. I had to. They made me. Look, I, I want to talk to you. I know that feeling. I want to talk to you, too. I can explain everything. Like a gun with one bullet fired? Yes. A missing telephone that wasn't? That, too. Oh. Then you're just a little girl I want to have words with. Can you come over here right away? Are the police there? Oh, that's right. Name a place, I'll meet you. The corner of 6th and Victor, 10 minutes. Right. Follow me, Mr. Holliday. Oh, where to? Your room. This ain't the Roney Plaza, but the service is just the same. I've changed my mind. You're not staying? Your rates are too high. I'll drop in again after I've made a fortune. Now I know how the fox feels when the hounds are closing in. Hmm. Someday I'll have to write a story about a fox. Put that guy Burgess and his Peter Rabbit out of business. Hey, cab! Oh, it's you again. Yeah, I get around, don't I? I thought you were set for the night. No running ice water. Six and Victor. Where did you say you wanted to go? Six and Victor. But there ain't no place to sleep there. Oh, I'm not sleepy. I just want to examine a fire hydrant. Okay, mister. I'm glad it's your money and not mine. If we keep on, it will be your money. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Say, uh, is that tonight's extra lying up there? Sure. Want to take a look at it? Oh, yeah, thanks. That picture they got of you on the front page is lousy. What picture? You look like you was facing the camera through a screen door. Yeah, let me see that. 
Well, 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 this is just wonderful. Prominent writer named by police. Carla Williams accuses Dan Holliday of the murder of Harry Grange. A grief-stricken girl witnessed the murder of her fiancé. Well, nice going, Carla. It's your word against mine, plus the evidence against me. Now I know why they wrote that song, I Get Along Without You Very Well. Well, there's six and Victor. Cruise on by. You ain't gonna stop? I haven't made up my mind. Looks like a couple of cops waiting around for somebody. That's the way it looks to me. That might be the law. Yes, they might be. What do you want to do now? Get away from here and find a city directory. A chap by the name of Harry Granger should have a home. And he should have stayed in it. I'm either just ahead of the police or right behind them. And if this game keeps up much longer, I'll be right with them. Yeah? Oh, uh, Harry Granger live here? He did. You the police? Well, no, not exactly. A reporter? I used to be. Come here, you. I wonder if you're one of them blackmailers. Just a minute, friend. My coat rips easy. No, I guess not. If you were, you wouldn't be here. Mind if I step in? Come in, come in. This whole thing's got me all upset. You don't say. Oh, uh, you said something about a blackmailer. That's what I'm here for. I came to help Harry get rid of those rats. You mean he was being blackmailed? For five years. I lent him most of the money to pay off with. I told him he was a sucker, but it looks like I got here too late. You heard what happened? Saw it in the papers on my way from the station. Have you told the police? Not yet, but I'm going to. Who did you say you were? I didn't say. You know something about this? I think I do now. I began to see the light when the city directory listed this place as Granger's apartment. Can I help? You might get into trouble. Well, how? Breaking into a woman's apartment. <laughs> After this, I'll use a fire escape and more of my stories of the most interesting things about a building. The man from Homicide will be out in the hall seeing that no one comes in here. I'll have to work fast, Holloway. You'll have to find something that the police weren't looking for. There must be something. Bills, letters, cards, that's no good. Look, look for the obvious. That's, that's what I always have my hero doing. Let's see, what's the obvious? Or oh, the living room. Now, let's see. That's where the body was. Nothing obvious there. On the desk. No, no. The table. No. The fireplace. Hello, hello, hello. A small frame snapshot. And I think it might be just what I'm looking for. My old friend, the bartender. Carla Williams. And with your arms around each other. You know, you two make a nice couple, a wonderful couple. I wonder if they'll let you have your arms around each other in the electric chair. You are listening to Box 13, starring Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. I finally made it. I'm down at police headquarters in the office of a tall, gangly character named Lieutenant Kling. Of course, a few things have happened. Carl and the bartender were brought in, too. And so much cooler than I am. Oh, those cell bars give you such fine ventilation. Holiday. Um, what's that, Lieutenant? I said you were a very lucky citizen. After what Carla Williams told us, we thought you were guilty. If she'd have told me that story, I'd have believed it myself. But proving that she and the bartender were married put a crimp in her act as the injured fiancé. Yeah, you showed it up as the same old racket. Smart woman teams up with smart man to blackmail innocent citizen. But just the same, I think you should stick to your writing and let police work alone. A lieutenant, I'll have that printed and framed in blonde walnut. Hang it on the wall? No, around my neck. I'm glad to hear you say that. You may not always have a guy like this Grant who backed up your story. Oh, uh, Granger's friend? That's the one. Say, he's a nice fella. Wants me to visit him on his ranch. 
Why don't you do that? Riding the range all day when I could be cooking in town? Uh, pardon me. Homicide, Lieutenant Kling. Oh, yes, yes, he's here. It's for you, Holiday. Oh, thanks. Hello? Mr. Holiday, this is Susie. Yes, Susie. Can you come down to the Star Times right away? Oh, what's the matter? There's another letter for you in box 13. Oh, no, no, no. Should I uh, open it and read it to you? Oh, not now, Susie. I I've got enough material to last me for a month. Three weeks of which will be a rest. Tell me where. M maybe I can come down and help you. You really want to help me? Sure I do, Mr. Holiday. Then put that letter back in box 13. But, Mr. Holiday. Good night, Susie. Next week, same time, Ellen Ladd stars as Dan Holiday in Box 13. <laughs> Alan Ladd appears through the courtesy of Paramount Pictures and may currently be seen in Wild Harvest. Box 13 is written and directed by Ted Hediger. Original music composed and conducted by Rudy Schrager. This is a Mayfair production. Mm -hmm.